Okay, so we now have Dr. Mohammed Khan, and he's a lecturer in haematology in Cork University Hospital and also a clinical research fellow in UCC. Um, and he's going to talk to us about understanding the risk of blood clots in ovarian cancer. You, you may have seen in your, in your pack this leaflet, but people with cancer have a higher risk of blood clots and ovarian cancer patients have a higher risk again. Um, it's very treatable if it's caught in time and caught early. Um, however, cancer patients are seldom warned about this or, nor are given uh, much information about it. And this is why the Health Research Board and the research group in, uh, in TCD have got together to produce this, this leaflet, uh, explain the risk of blood clots and what to look out for, etc. And the leaflet has actually been officially launched today at, the, at, at, at today's patient day. So, and you have a copy, as I said, to you in your pack. So, delighted uh, to have uh, Mohammed here today, so he's going to, to, to talk to us now. So, you're very welcome. Thank you very much to be part of this fantastic group. Um, I will talk about um, risk or uh, risk of uh, thrombosis, thrombosis clot. So I will try to explain in, uh, in, in the terms you can understand uh, as much as uh, I can, okay? But if you don't, let me know and we could um, answer that one in our, in our question answer um, time. So, so what is uh, blood clot? So clotting is, an, is, is a normal process. Whenever there is injury to any part of the body, uh, normally body reacts, okay? And uh, it mechanisms come into action and bleeding stops. That is a normally, because, uh, 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 bleeding stops because clot is made inside that vessel. And it's a complex process. And sometimes clots are formed abnormally in the blood vessels. And that is the, uh, uh, the, the problem when, when we have abnormally <coughs> clot in the blood vessel. And clots can be in arteries as well as in veins. Um, I'll just explain you what, is, wh what are arteries and what are the veins. So arteries are the vessels or, uh, uh, in, in the body system. They take good blood from the lungs to the all parts of the body to supply oxygen and all good metabolites. And uh, the veins are the ones which brings back all the bad blood towards the lungs. Just be clear. So arteries take blood from, from the lungs to the tissues and veins will bring it back. So you all, all uh, sometimes you heard about stroke, heart, heart attack and peripheral blood uh, diseases. So this is different than what I am going to talk about today. So because you, you always heard of stroke, stroke is very common uh, term, PIA or stroke. That is if there is a clot in the arteries of the brain or heart attack if there is clot in the arteries supplying heart, that is heart attack or uh, uh, myocardial infarction. And then peripheral arteries, you could develop gangrene in any part of the uh, body if clot is in the arteries supplying that uh, limb. So I just want you to concentrate on the veins now, okay? Veins are, um, it could be superficial veins or the deeper uh, body veins. So veins could, in, in, the, in, in the limbs, or upper limb or lower limb or any other parts, there are veins, okay? So the majority we are concerned about the deep veins of the lower limbs, which are more, we are concerned about it because abnormal clots are formed in there. What happens, they, this, this clot can break off from here and travel and goes to the lungs that we call, so initially when clot was in the leg, it was deep venous thrombosis, DVT we call it. But if breaks off and grows to the lungs, it is called pulmonary embolism or PE. <coughs> that is a serious, serious condition, okay? So what causes a blood clot? Uh, Rudolf Virchow, 150 years ago, German scientist, uh, pathologist, physician, so he gave this triangle of three that this, these are the causes of clot in the veins and for the last hundred and more than 150 years we have not changed it because it is still um, it's true that the one, uh, number one is flow of blood in a vein slows, second one damage to a vein or blood is more clottable. So wherever there is a clot in the vein, either one 
or combination of these three will be there. So these are the common factors for developing a clot. These are the common factors. They could be more uh, than this. And the major, major one is hospitalization. Hospitalization for any reason. Going in for pneumonia, infection, or your operation, any operation. So that increases your risk of clot because in hospitalization, you go in, you are not mobile much, you are not moving around, and then you are on multiple antibiotics and things. So the hospitalization is main thing. And then you have surgery. In surgery, you are lying uh, under general anesthetics. You are not mobilizing. You're, so you're, your body is, in, uh, is still. So blood is not flowing as it would be if you are mobile. And then during surgery, we injured the vessels as well. So there is another reason. So, sim so hospitalization, then others, uh, paralysis, prolonged sitting, for any other reason, like long haul flights, more than four hours, that's also a risk factor if, if someone is uh, already in the risk group. As I mentioned, surgery, especially surgery in the pelvis, uh, orthopedic surgery of the hips, bone fractured, and then cast is applied, so that is immobilized. And then because cancer patients have pick lines or other lines placed in, because that injures the vein, and also it causes sluggish flow of the blood as well, so that increases the risk of clot. The others would be increased estrogen, different uh, contraceptive devices, then pregnancy itself, uh, especially post uh, six weeks post uh, birth, and then estrogen, especially in the treatment of the cancer. And medication, other medical conditions, uh, cancer and chemotherapy is main. We just heard about the chemotherapies, and there are some concerns which are at increased risk of developing these clots, especially stomach, uh, pancreatic, and then ovarian, lung, and colorectal. These are the highest, with highest risk that you can develop uh, a clot. And then other factors will be there as well. Uh, previous history of uh, blood clotting, family history of clotting, clotting disorders, obesity, or increased body weight then old age, cigarette smoking, and then varicose veins. Varicose veins is the prominent veins on the legs. That is called varicose veins. If you have those, you are at increased risk of developing clot. So I just wanted to show you the, what's the incidence. You have that one in your leaflet. Just wanted to uh, uh, say this because you need to know the importance of this. People sitting in the community, normal, no risk factors, no cancer, no, uh, they are younger than um, uh, 60 years even. So their risk of developing a clot is one in thousand. One in thousand. And you can see with, with cancers, ovarian cancer, one in 10. And the subcategory risk goes up. So this is just diagnosis of cancer gives, increases the risk so much. Just imagine if you are undergoing a surgery now this risk goes hundredfold. This has been tested thing. So just this is just to increase the importance of why we are talking about this today. So a little bit about the symptoms um, and signs of the blood clot. So clot can be formed at any, as I said, any deep vein um, that could be um, abdomen, brain, or, or it could, but majority we are concerned is the lower legs, okay? Uh, the, the signs are pain, swelling, discoloration of the skin, as well as uh, warmth. You could see there could be erythema, redness. You feel that this leg is swollen more than the left one. Or uh, you, you will have pain in, in, in that in that leg. It could be one leg, it could be both, it could be lower, it could be upper. But don't ignore this. Similarly, pulmonary embolism, the, the clot in the lungs, okay? You could, uh, the, the, that could give you shortness of breath, uh, chest pain, unexplained cough, and cough, you could have blood in the cough as well, or uh, you could have tachycardia, or in, un, uh, explain your heart rate goes up. So don't ignore these things. So chest pain, don't ignore this. This would be typically pleuritic chest pain. You will feel that when you take deep breath in, your pain comes back. It will catch you. So don't ignore this. You can always think that your underlying uh, 
disease is causing this one or uh, but don't ignore these symptoms this is the third type of clot that is only in the super superficial vein okay sometimes you will feel there is a cord in your leg or anywhere that is a clot in your superficial vein we don't treat this one with the whatever we do treatment for the others unless it is communicating with the deeper vein but please don't ignore this as well so if you have these if you are experiencing these signs and symptoms give much importance to these and report to your doctor emergency department immediately don't think today is friday or saturday or sunday or i have appointment tomorrow i'll tell this could be serious okay because if you are ignoring symptoms or lack that could be detached it could go to the lungs it could be serious then just uh, telling you the tests what we do um, when you go to emergency department what tests they will do you just familiarize yourself um, blood test is a d dimer test which they do for uh, the testing is is there a, a signs of clot in the blood because whenever there is a clot formation in your body this substance in the blood increases so that gives a clue to that but imaging would be the diagnostic test and for leg upper limb or legs we use this ultrasound doppler they do ultrasound scanning of the leg and they could see the veins and blood flow where there is clot they could clearly see it and report it as clot okay so this is a non invasive test and similarly uh, if we are suspecting you have clot in the lungs ct this is one uh, one part um, uh, special type of ct scan which you you have for your abdominal chest this is special one that concentrate on the vessels of the uh, lungs and they could clearly see if there is a clot in the in the lungs there are other tests but more than 95 or 98% we use only these two for uh, diagnosis so sorry i have bad throat so if you have developed a clot uh, what are our goals for the treatment okay just that we want to make sure that this clot is not growing any further whether that was in the leg or the or, or, or the lungs and we want to prevent any new clots happening and then we want that this clot should not break off from the leg and go to the lungs and then the last one is to minimize the complications what could be the complication is post uh, complication could be if we don't treat them post thrombotic syndrome which could happen in the legs that always the leg will be swollen even we have treated it there will be prominent veins on the legs and it will be painful as well and similarly for the pulmonary embolism if we don't treat it properly or even after treatment in in 4 to 5% of people they could still develop symptoms of uh, exertional dyspnea and what is the standard treatment for developing a clot uh, for uh, clot in with the background of cancer is injectable low molecular weight heparin okay this is an injection uh, that is a standard treatment for 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 patient who has background history of cancer and this treatment continues for 6 months or maybe more sometimes if the cancer or chemotherapy is active and we think that a uh, patient is still not well mobilized we continue it for longer periods so you have to discuss uh, with your oncology or specialist doctors as well regarding this so this is the treatment of choice in cancer patients unless there are contraindications or patient doesn't want to have injections there are tablets like you have heard of warfarin or there are new tablets nowadays directly orally acting anticoagulants doax we call so but this is the standard treatment you have heard of graduated compression stockings this is just to prevent the complications just to prevent those remnants of the prominent veins on the legs and uh, sometimes if there is contraindication to give a uh, preventative dose of hospital hospitalized patients we just advise them to wear these that will give you pressure in the legs legs so that the blood flow should be increased and that should be um started as after acute clot maybe 7 to 10 days because we don't want that complication should develop and then we start this so 
before we have prominent veins and so that we could prevent post-thrombotic uh, syndrome. And that should be advised by the specialist doctor as well. So last two slides are on the prevention of this because prevention is the key and we can prevent all this. This is a preventable thing. So as we, we were hearing that healthy lifestyle is the most important. So reduce or stop smoking or, and alcohol. Then if you have a bit high uh, body weight, you should try to reduce it and walk around and change your position um, after long periods of time and even while sitting. So this is the exercise we always recommend to do. Uh, just to compress your uh, calf muscles so that when you do this, this will work as a pump and blood flow flows back to your body. After long sitting, uh, especially long haul flights, frequently do that one and come out and walk around. And this is the, uh, and then try to drink plenty of fluids rather than coffee or tea. So I always stress this prevention whenever you are in high risk situations and one of that is when you are in hospital that is the that is that is the area where we should we should concentrate and you should be asking your doctor then am i at high risk of developing a clot please give me uh, something to prevent it okay now in cuh we have done a risk assessment form that is attached to all the drug cardexes so nobody can ignore this so they have to risk assess everyone who is coming in, everyone, 100%. So then fill it and then prescribe whatever is appropriate according to that. It's, it takes two minutes. So ask them, am I at a risk of develop, developing a clot? Because if we can prevent it here, you don't have to suffer. You don't have to suffer the complications then. So that could be during the hospital stay, especially after surgery, and but at discharge, we advise them to review patient again and risk assess again. Maybe you are a person who is a highest risk group and they will give you four to six weeks more at home as well or till you are full mobilized. So these are four messages. So you have whoever has cancer background has high risk of developing a clot, okay? So prevention is the key. So we can prevent this. And early recognition signs and symptoms if you develop. So please report. And then we have a standard treatment for that one. I think that's it. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.